Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Now, Brian, go with me here. You ready? Yeah. Knock, knock. Who's there? Sensor. Sensor who? Knock sensor. Come on, man, go with me here. Hey, this Garage Ed is all about the knock sensor. What is it, what does it do, and how does the computer realize it's doing it? Well, we're gonna talk about that. Knock sensor is actually a piezoelectric generator. It creates its own voltage, it's pretty cool. And I'll show you where it is. It's located here in the coolant jacket. So what's happening is it's stuck here in the coolant jacket. I got a little demo set up here, and you can see the piston inside of here. So that would be the cylinder. So I submerge it down in the coolant, and the piston inside of there starts to rattle or ping a little bit. Well, what happens when it starts to rattle or ping? It's actually normal. It gets up the timing, starts to rattle or ping. It's so sensitive, it senses that. And you know what it does? Retards the timing, it backs it up. So why do we have one? Well, real simple. We're gonna control the timing perfectly. Well, I creep up a little bit, knocking, I creep back. I creep up a little bit, knocking, I creep back. So I'm right on that threshold of perfect timing. And here it is right here on the board. This is a knock sensor located right there. And what's happening is it's reporting over to the computer and the computer then sends it to the either electronic control module or something going on with the timing where it can actually retard and advance a spark. And if I turn it on right there, you can see it's sending a reference. Now this is pretty cool because I can come over here and I can tap this. And when I tap it, watch the screen. Now I'm really lightly gonna tap it. So as I tap it, it sees that vibration. The vibration goes away, it sees the vibration. So that's what the computer's looking for. Now it retards that timing. And think about this for a minute. You know, octane rating in gas, that's actually the ability to withstand knock. So you get some 93 octane in there, you're maybe advancing the timing a little bit more because the knock sensor's not picking up because you're running that good gasoline, you're gonna get better performance. So I go put some cheap grade gas in there. Well, what's happening? It's knocking, retarding the timing, it's knocking, returning the timing, so what do you do? You push the gas more to the floor. So you get you some good gas, stop that knock. Now Brian's got a really cool demo set up so he can actually show it to you in action on the car. Well, to show you how this works, we've got the Bluetooth connector hooked into the OBD2 port inside. We've got the big screen up so you can see this versus my phone. And folks, don't try this at home. Literally, we're going to simulate a knock on the engine. I can promise you that that knock sensor is clear up under the exhaust manifold and you just can't get to it from here, not easily. But I'm still kind of getting over John's really bad knock knock joke. So I grabbed the big breaker bar when I was thinking about him and I'm going to put it down here right next to the sensor. And I'm going to wrap this, and you're going to see on the screen the knocking happen. Simulating it, keys on, OBD2 connector is connected. Here we go. Now, when you think about the crankshaft in motion, the connecting rods, the pistons, all of that mass and high-speed motion under there, it doesn't take a whole lot of knocking to be able to detect that vibration on the vibration monitor that is called the knock sensor. That's what it's all about. Now, what causes that? Carbon, carbon's as guilty as it comes. Carbon builds up on valves. You can get carbon throughout the engine, throughout the entire combustion process that over time can cause imperfections in detonation, in where it detonates inside the cylinder. All types of carbon tracking problems can cause knocking. How about spark plugs? Have you put in spark plugs recently? Was it knocking before that? If you have, did you have them gapped properly? Are you using the right spark plugs? So many things can be a culprit in this space. Remember the old days when the distributor, when you would advance or retard the timing, you would turn the distributor? That's what your ECU is doing multiple times a second, real time, to keep the knocking and keep the ignition timing just perfect. So speaking of perfect or not, Tom and John have a lot more tech tips for you. Tom, I love to go to Rock Auto because it's got such a wide selection of parts and I'm in control. I mean, you got economy lines, daily drivers, high performance, but sometimes maybe I don't know which one I want. How are you gonna help me there? With the huge choice of brands and parts, it helps if you get some feedback from other people who face the same situation as you. They have the same car, face the same problem. If you're shopping for something like a tumbler, then maybe half a dozen reviews from people you can decipher and kind of get a feel for a good choice. But with all the different makes and models and parts, you can't really do that. There's not enough people writing reviews. So what we've done is we look at, at, at actual data, what customers have bought, most often and what they return the least often and those get the heart icons so people facing they have the same car facing the same repair what do they choose and what do they keep 
And so, sometimes you may not want the, the most popular part if you have special needs. Let's say you have a truck and you're using it for, for towing or something, then, then you would still want to go to the heavy duty section and get the, the brake pads or whatever part made for, for the heavy duty application. Well, perfect. Yeah, we're building an LS motor, and I actually went on, and I was looking at the hearts knowing that. I was pretty confident the part was good, and it was going to work because everybody was using it. And 